Hello and welcome to my video lecture on the architecture of a client-server uh, application. Uh, so what you see here uh, is a slide describing um, the architecture of, of a web application. Uh, here we see um, uh, an icon for the client. Uh, so the client would be your computer at home, uh, your computer when you're sitting at work, basically any computer that you're sitting at. Um, so a, a, um, a client would have a web browser. Uh, the web browser would be uh, the tool or the software used to access information uh, from the web server via the internet. Uh, we're going to take a, uh, a closer look at what we mean by the internet or this cloud type of uh, image. Uh, and that's really where uh, the term the cloud comes from uh, because for slides like this, uh, we uh, publishers and authors have described or indicated the internet as a cloud looking thing. <laughs> so there's the cloud, that's the internet. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, for, for now you've got your client which is a, a computer that has access to the internet um, and again it's, it's going to use uh, software like a web browser such as Chrome, Internet Explorer, uh, Mozilla Firefox, Opera, whatever, um, to access uh, the internet. Then on the other side of things, we've got web servers. Uh, web servers are used to serve web pages. Um, so the, the, all of these servers are used to uh, share resources with the client. Uh, obviously, you're not going to have all of the possible, all, all of the world's information on your client. So you're going to need to access all of that information that is stored on servers all over the world and you do that via the internet. So here we have a, uh, an example, uh, uh, an icon uh, symbol denoting a web server. Again, a web server is going to serve up web pages. So the web pages that appear on your computer you are going to essentially download off of a web server so that they will display on your client computer. Uh, typically, you will go through a web server to get uh, authenticated uh, in some way, shape, or form so that you can uh, access data that's on a database server. Uh, for instance, if you go to a, a website uh, like CNN.com or something like that, uh, where you have this type of streaming information, um, a lot of data that needs to be refreshed constantly, uh, the web server would reach out to the database server and the database server would be where all of the news is being updated and the database server would provide information to the web server to update the web pages. And you also have email servers. Uh, you're used to this uh, if you use Gmail or uh, Outlook or um, Optimum Online or, or whoever your internet service provider is to, to access your email. There are email servers that are going to uh, collect all of the messages and all of the attachments that are associated with emails so that your client machines can access them through the internet. This next slide um, is the architecture of the internet. And this slide denotes uh, how when you make a request from your client machine denoted by icons out here. So these, these little icons uh, denote browsers. So you've got these browsers or clients, and they're going to access a LAN. So a LAN is a local area network. Uh, a local area network is a, uh, a cluster of typically um, uh, typically computers that are uh, physically close to one another, perhaps in the same building um, or the same uh, group of buildings. Uh, so there's going to be a bunch of computers that are associated with a LAN. Um, any particular LAN uh, would then reach out to what's known as a WAN or a wide area network. The LAN would also, just getting back to the LAN for just a second, this would be your, your intranet. So if, uh, for instance, a, a company would have one building or uh, some floors in a building that would all be associated with um, their local area network. Uh, within that local area network, you could share things amongst each other in what's known as an intranet. Um, so typically, your, your computer uh, would access a LAN, 
Uh, the LAN could also be your internet service provider, uh, considering you know your your household. So uh, the LAN could be represented um, that way, or uh, an internet service provider could be a WAN, uh, a wide area network. Um, so a WAN would be, um, you know, multiple LANs would make up a WAN. Uh, that would be uh, connected to each other. So again, you have a local area network and then you have a wide area network. And all of these wide area networks need to access uh, other WANs uh, to access information. And that typically happens in these internet exchange points. Um, and, and again, you'd have an internet service provider uh, that would give you access to the internet um, and also give you access to these internet exchange points and these internet exchange points would, would connect other LANs. So if I'm here on uh, my client, I would access my LAN. Um, then from my LAN, I would access a, a WAN. And then from the WAN, I would access an internet exchange point that would give me, um, hopefully, access to the WAN that I'm looking for. Uh, and then that WAN would get me to a smaller uh, LAN uh, and then that would give me access to the data that I'm actually looking for. Uh, typically, again, a web server, a database server, an email server, something along those lines. Uh, so let's take a look uh, quickly. If you, if you open up Chrome, you can search uh, something like, you know, IXP, right? And then here are your Internet Exchange Points. So there's a, an internetsociety.org, uh, which shows you your, your IXPs. Uh, you can look up you can look up IXP in, in any uh, number of places, um, but here in this website um, you can look up uh, all sorts of you know where are they what are they um, all the different uh, IXPs that are out there you can figure out which ones you actually uh, access uh, when you are uh, going from when to when you can see what internet exchange points are out there. Um, let me see if I can find a, a better uh, website, Internet Exchange Points. So here we have Wikipedia, right? So if you look it up on Wikipedia, um, there are Internet Exchange, uh, you know, Internet Service Providers. What I'm looking for is more of a list. So here, main building for the London uh, Internet Exchange. So you can see that there's a, a few out there. Um, the 19-inch rack used for switches at the DECIX in Frankfurt, Germany. So there is a list somewhere. Where's my list? So here's your uh, Internet Exchange Association, Global Internet Exchange Points. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so here you've got a whole list, a whole plethora of the different Internet Exchange Points that are out there. So if you're looking for ones that are in the U.S., because uh, I'm in the U.S. right now, so you can see that there are quite a few uh, in the United States. There's one in Hawaii, there's one in Albuquerque, Billings. Uh, I'm in New York, so there's the, the New York Internet uh, International Internet Exchange, and there's the big Apple Peering Exchange. There's the Equinix uh, Internet Business Exchange. So you can see there are quite a few, uh, as you might imagine, uh, that would be uh, necessary <laughs> uh, to support all of these different WANs and LANs that are out there. Um, so the terms that we've learned so far, uh, you should know what a server is at this point, or at least the function of a server. You should know what a client is and the software that a client would use, such as internet browsers. Uh, you should understand the idea of what a, a network is. Um, so your, your client would access a network, uh, which might use a router to access uh, the LAN, uh, which would then give you access to the WAN. Um, the LANs and the WANs are all part of the internet. Uh, WANs uh, exchange information through internet exchange points and any person or company that needs access to the internet would have to get uh, that information through an internet service provider. So that is uh, the end of my uh, video lecture on um, client server architecture and how they work.